Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I'm an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oils sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, identity, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Here we are. It is Monday, November the 11th, and this is Clyde J. Gale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 21, and I am here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello, (laughs) Diane. Hello, Constance. (laughs) Once again, we are going to talk about art and what it means to us and Hopefully, you folks enjoy listening to it. Um, one of the recommended videos that I uh, posted for us to watch was a video of Stefan Bauman's. And he talks about painting emotion and using your art to create a story. That's what will start the conversation off. And uh, Diane, you want to you want to start the, start the conversation? Yeah, I think that's an important topic. Um, I think most paintings it's good to have some type of story that goes with it. And I think most of the time mine usually do because I'm out a lot of times I'm out in nature painting and I have a response to a location or scenery that I'm seeing. And I, I usually have some kind of a story that goes along with it, you know, how I happened upon it or a location that I'm in or something. So it, it does evoke a certain, um, memory i guess of that place so i think that's um a valid point (laughs) i think it's an important point i think a lot of people see things and um they can create in their own mind a story that goes with it or a memory that they have of a place or you know um or what they're seeing It, it reminds them of something or takes them to a place they had been or something and it's a connection that people make with a painting. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Constance, you want to. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's good to have, you know, you're supposed to, it's, it's try to get uh, people to evoke a, a, a response to your painting by being drawn in. And even if they don't get your story from it, they can make a story themselves from it. You know, by looking at it, it, it uh, reminds them maybe of something of their past that they like, you know, brings up a, uh, just an emotion from the past or something because of the painting. Exactly. In fact, you just took, you took my comments away from me. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say when I'm oftentimes when I'm uh, inspired to create a, a piece of work, I've got the story in my mind 
that I'm uh, wanting to uh, translate the paint and canvas and the drawing and the, and the creation. That's the story in my mind. But it would be nice if someone else picked that up right away. But if the piece can actually elicit a comment or create a, a, uh, a story in their mind, then I'm happy. I've done my job. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same thought that I have, but if it's like a, like recently this last week, you know, earlier before we started recording, I was talking about, you know, I painted this image of these trees. And the reason why is because I came across a reference photo that reminded me of a childhood event. And I was, you know, my brothers and I, we always lived in the country and we were always in trees. <laughs> and this particular reference photo had these trees. And when I posted it, <coughs> A lot of people, I had comments, some people, oh, it looks like it's a haunted forest. And then somebody else said, reminded them of J.R. Tolkien, you know, the Hobbit stories, which completely didn't even enter my mind whatsoever. But it felt good that, hey, this has created a, a, a story in their mind. This has touched them. And that, for me personally, that is uh, my success. That's I feel successful. That was a successful painting. I think yeah, you want your paintings to have emotion and for people to connect with your work, you know, and when you get um, a response like that, it makes you feel good, you know. So. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be the same response that you had. If, I mean, they, everybody interprets things in a different way and connects with things in, differently. So any kind of um, response is, is a good thing. You know, they're making a connection with it. So it's, that's really what it's all about. And that's like in the, you know, Stefan Bauman uh, video, and he was talking about uh, when he says uh, paint with emotion, that, uh, that uh, comes across because how you, uh, how you lay the paint, you know, onto the, onto the canvas or the surface. Uh, with the you know with the brush strokes, uh, with the uh, color, and how the uh, the light you know affects the 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 object the object or the the and then the the uh, arrangement of composition you know and using the uh, with the eye magnets you know and things like that. In fact, that leads us into talking more about the art terminology and everything. Um, Diane, I'll let you explain. What what are eye magnets? <laughs> um, they're generally a spot or you know different spots in, within the painting that direct your eye to a, a certain area of the painting. Um, there's different ways of drawing people into a painting and helping them to stay in there and move around within the painting. Um, there's different techniques that do that and eye magnets is one of them. Um, they're generally something that's more in focus, um, or it could be a certain color that draws your eye. Um, there's ways of painting um, movement within the painting to help the viewer move around within the painting and, and circle back around and um, stay within the painting itself. There's a lot of different techniques and ways of being able to do that. Yeah, I think Stefan Bauman m mentioned something that he uh, uses the spiral, you know, Ted, because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's been proven that uh, the eyes tend to fo follow a spiral mo motion. So his paintings are kind of like a, uh, his eye magnets are arranged in a, in a spiral, you know, type. Yeah, it, it depends on if there's a, a vocal point, which is like a specific spot that you want to take the viewer to like a lot of times in landscapes especially they'll have uh, some place in the distance and all the elements of the painting are kind of drawing your eye into that it's almost like a funnel where you're you're going in so you see you go like way back into the distance if there's like mountains or something it kind of takes you back to them um, 
to, I, and there's there's different um, uh, shapes that cause your eye to do that, like to follow paths or whatever. It's like there's a lot of different, but yeah, spiral is one of them. <laughs> yeah, and I think they also talked about the, and, and um, even with the different kinds of brush strokes and the thickness of you know of the paint, you know. Uh, there was one time in one of his videos, he was saying that if you take and you paint a, um, like a, 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 a horizontal line in thick paint, regardless of whatever color it is, the eye will be drawn to that quicker or, or the, the, the way, cause the light will bounce off of that differently than just a, a a same stroke but painted in a flat you know motion mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's not, that's another technique <laughs> it's like there's a lot of different ways of doing it um yeah sometimes bright areas draw your eye sometimes it's a bright color or it could be a dark color within a bright um within bright other bright colors it's like, I don't know, it's, there's a lot of different things. If you start looking at um, paintings or pictures even and consciously realize what your eyes are doing, how they're going over the scene that they're looking at, you'll realize that there's different, you know, you're, you'll realize you'll, how your eyes are moving through it. Like most people don't really think about it and you don't notice it specifically unless you're thinking about it. Exactly. So yeah. for, our, for our listeners, uh, you you might think that uh, you're uh, looking at a painting in a particular way, but us as artists, if we've done our job, we are directing you. We are controlling you. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, Gossip? He's going to say something. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Yeah. No, that's pretty much it. I mean, when you're making a painting, you want their eyes to go where you want them to go and to be drawn into the painting to look at that particular place in the painting that you want them to go to. And so everything you do in the painting is supposed to help pull them into that area, you know. In a sense, it's, 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 a, it's a way of uh, controlling you know the uh, the viewer controlling the, the eyes of the viewer and uh, like you know Costa said focusing their uh, their attention to you know one area or another now another term that i know that many of our non artist listeners have probably come across is temperature when someone says well that that's a warm painting or that's a really cool painting, not in a sense of cool or chic, but in a sense as cool as in, as shivering, you know. <laughs> you know, um, one of you two, you want to want to take on that? Explain temperature. Well, the color temperatures have a lot to do with, um, like reds, oranges, yellows. They're all warm colors, like the sun. You know, that's how I remember. It's easier to remember that way. That's the sun is warm, so all the reds and oranges and stuff are, are color. Those colors are warm colors. The cold colors, the cooler colors are greens, blues, anything in that realm. But there's also within, even within like the warm colors, there are colors that are cooler and hotter. <laughs> So, it, yeah. and the same way with the co cooler colors, there's some that are warmer and hotter. Like so, a, green, a green yellow is a cooler yellow or a yeah. orange yellow is a warmer yellow. Right. So, and carefully placed, they make your eyes do things, you know. Yep. Generally, I mean, I do landscapes, so generally, I mean, this can vary, but generally the distant the further in the distance things are the lighter they are the, you know they're they're usually whiter in color and cooler in color and the closer things get um they're usually warmer 
that's a generalization. I mean, it doesn't always happen that way, but generally that's kind of how it works. Even like if you look out in your, in your landscapes, not even necessarily paintings, but just on in the landscape in general, it's like that. So next time you go outside, <laughs> you yeah. might notice like the trees in the distance are a little um, are they a lighter warm red and or yeah, just because yeah. the leaves. But then if the sun is setting hot, or you know the light's shining from the sun onto things, it can make things hotter. Mm -hmm. You can get more of the oranges and stuff on trees or whatever. So it's and right. the shadow side would be cooler. It just there's a lot of variation yeah, in that. Now, but. right? Yeah, right now the um, the leaves have changed to these beautiful colors. You know, and a tree yeah. might be <laughs> all have have all red leaves on it. Well, when the sun is shining on it, then the side that the sun is shining in on it's going to have all warm color reds. And in order to make it look, you know the different colors, the different, the shape that it is, you use different colors to give it that round shape in order, within that red color, there are warm, warm reds and cool reds. So yeah. I know sometimes that doesn't make sense to people who don't actually do the painting, but. <laughs> yeah. But it all comes together when we're doing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. You might have to fight with it a little bit to get it there, but you know. I think that's what uh, uh, I, because I've had my own relatives. Uh, they, you know, I've talked to, you know, on, on the phone, or whatever, and and I'll discuss a certain painting, and they're just, oh, that painting is just so beautiful, and I said, no, it sucks. <laughs> what? <laughs> it sucks. Well, you know, I've got the colors all out of kilter. I don't have as much warm colors as I want, and I are much cool color, and they're just amazed. They're just like flabbergasted is like, what what are you talking about you know <laughs> so we as artists you know we uh, uh for for our non-artist listeners um this is why not everybody is an artist because it takes a lot of work doesn't it it takes a lot of work to to you know when you paint enough and as Stephen Bauman always says, practice, 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 practice. And he said, the more you paint, the more you, know, you, you practice. As I was saying, the more you paint, the more you see, and the more you don't know. <laughs> it's like, you know, because to it some extent. Because it, it opens up more, you know, because yeah. you want you know, you want to improve in this area more than the other. But these things of eye magnets and color temperatures and all these things, they become when in the for when you're beginning oh these are oh my god god i gotta remember all this stuff you know and, and <laughs> it's like like overload but then as you really focus on those items and you put those into your creations then and then you do more and you paint 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 you know more uh <laughs> you uh they become second nature right I mean, you don't even think about Harley anymore, you know, and that's why I'm jogging uh, uh, Diane's brain because uh, among the three of us, Diane actually went to art school. She actually went to art <laughs> yeah. That was a long time ago, though. I forgot most of the stuff. Most yeah. of it's so intuitive now because I've been doing it for so long. I forgot exactly. well, about saying, it so you're, much. You're a perfect example. You know, you don't even, so these, some of this terminology that I'm coming across, you know, I'm bringing up for you, you know, that's why I'm picking your brain, you know. <laughs> yeah 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 I, that that's what help that's why it helps to practice all the time because then you get familiar with the colors that you do like to use and you know how to blend them and make them layer them or whatever you want to do with them to make to get the effect that you're going after so yep. when you don't it's like for me when i put the brush down for 12 years and the pastels down for 12 years and i came back to them it's like it has been a serious battle getting worn to back up but but you that's more. where the it's painting, like and painting, painting and painting comes in yeah it's just like anything you have to keep practicing if you want to be right <laughs> if, you're you're doing, if you're you don't i just thought i could pick it right back up and you know to a point you can pick it right back up but then there's to a point you have to start painting yeah. and painting and painting and painting again to get yourself back to that place where you were when you stopped <laughs> 
but I hope, I hope that our, uh, our sessions are, are encouraging you, Constance, you're getting back into it. I notice you, you're posting, you're posting more, uh, more artwork. You're doing pastels. You're doing, yeah. I mean, jewelry. I've been working with the pastels more than the oils lately, but I really like the pastels. Just like that velvety quality that they have, you know. Yeah, you're doing. Yeah, you're doing some great works. So I, I want. I'm looking. It's not like that. mixing a color with oils. I mean, with oils, if you can't find that color, you can mix it. But with pastels, you have to learn how to, to layer them and and uh, to get the colors that you're after. And this yep. was very seriously rusty. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's see. Now, one of the other videos that uh, uh, we talked about briefly, and, and then, we'll, then we're about ready to wrap this up. The session's already gone by quick. Um, let's see. What was it? There was a Sergio Gomez, didn't I recommend, when he was talking about mm -hmm. the, the types of artists. What kind of artists are you? Yeah. So, Constance, oh. I'll, I'll let you, since you, you watched it, what kind of artists are you of the kinds the kind of artists of that he mentioned? I forget what he mentioned. I watched the several videos today. Um, <laughs> when he was talking about, I said an artist who uh, uh, only goes through galleries, or another artist who only who only who does combination of galleries and and uh, online, or an artist who only does online, or I mean, those are the different kinds. Of what he was, yeah, you know, he was. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I remember now because I watched quite a few videos. Um, yeah, I remember. His was the first one I watched, and the kind of artist that I am is, um, I do like to post online, but I like to sell in person, and I don't know what it is about that, but I like to go, and I really miss that part of being up here, because I used to go to a place every Saturday and sell the jewelry, and I'm going back into artwork now, but still, I miss that one-on-one -on -one with people talking about the work or them finding a piece on the table that they really like and explaining to them how, you, you know, they want to know how you made it, you know, so you talk to them about it. So. Okay. Yeah. So you're more, so, you're more of that, you're, you're more of that first person, you know, personal thing. Right. I like to do first person sales, but then I've gotten into being on the internet, which is, you know, a challenge. <laughs> Diane, what about you? Did you, did you watch that video with Sergio or? Um, did I yeah, hear it right actually, or did I get it confused? With another I actually one? had a different one on here this time, but I remember that one from before. Um, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, I've done it. I've sold every, uh, every which way I can, I guess, but I agree with Constance. It is nice to talk to people in person and get their, you can, a lot of times it's not a verbal response. It's, uh, I mean, you can see how people respond to, to the work and not necessarily what they're saying about it. And um, a lot of people do have questions about how things are made or, um, you know, they, they tell you stories about what the, like we were just talking about, what mm -hmm. the picture means to them, like the, what the painting means to them and what they see in it or whatever. You know, it reminds them of something that, you know, happened to them or someplace that they had spent time or whatever. So that's always nice to hear because you don't always hear that kind of stuff when you um, sell things online. You don't yeah. get a lot of that feedback. So it, it's always nice to hear that kind of stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like to talk to people, so, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm just <laughs> too much of an introvert. It just, it actually, believe it or not, it actually terrifies me to <laughs> talk, which is why I don't participate in physical shows where I'm actually standing there with my heart. <laughs> It actually terrifies me. Somebody comes up and starts asking me questions about my art in person. Now it is a little scary at first when that when you first start online, doing that. Online, I agree. I am just happy go lucky. I can just and I've had so many people. You know, they you know they listen to me to my podcast and they uh, uh, see some of my videos. I don't do that many videos, but most of the time it's just my voice and and then my blog and they read <clears throat> and then i've had people say clyde you're such a personable person oh yeah meet me in person and see 
<laughs> just want to hide behind the microphone. <laughs> I am dominant yeah, through the internet. I am a perfect candidate, a perfect internet child. I mean, the internet is beautiful. It's perfect. It's my wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get you outside. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't mind talk I don't mind jabbering away in front of a microphone. I don't mind, you know, uh writing in but uh uh, oh, so the kind of artist I am, I'm the kind of artist that I hide, you know, it's not that I don't, I, oh, I love the comments. I really, if, if, uh, uh, like I was telling you earlier, you know, we started the, about the, our paintings, creating stories, you know, and this with the trees. I mean, when I create a, 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 a work of art and, and I post it online and it enlists you know, on Facebook and social media and, and it, uh, you know, solicits comments and people, you know, respond to it. I love that. I love, and well, I, that's, that's what it's like when you're at a show, except for you're just nervous about actually talking to somebody in person. <laughs> it's no different when you're at the show yeah. and somebody walks in and they, they like your work and they want to talk to you about it. And that is what I hide. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. that's actually, that's actually not all that uncommon with artists. A lot of artists no, are introverts. Not. Yeah, and because it's sure. because you you have spend so much time by yourself in your studio or you know outside painting, but you're when you're working, you're generally by yourself, and you're not used to um, you know talking about your work to people so much in you know face to face. Yes, but like in my case, I mean I'm outside you know doing plain air and stuff. People come up up to me when I'm working all the time, and start conversations and stuff. So I've gotten pretty used to it. And then doing shows and stuff too, you know, you talk to people. Yeah. But, but yeah. yeah, I remember though the first show I did, I was so nervous. I didn't know if I'd know what to say or how to answer people's questions. But you know, even though I have all this training and everything, it's like you know, you're like, it's different I when you have to like we, I came stand up and front of I came across a really short, a short video, and I'm going to insert the audio portion uh, into uh, near the end end of uh, this this session, which covers this thing, this topic. Uh, it's uh, the, what the uh, uh, art vocabulary, you know, how to uh, identify art vocabulary and how to talk about your work. And uh, for some of our artist listeners, uh, it uh, it might be proved to be interesting. But uh, in fact, I need to uh, follow some of the advice too, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but get over, get over my fear of talking in person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're on video and this is great here, but uh, I gotten used to it, but uh, you know, of course we're thousands of miles separation. <laughs> between <laughs> us. But this is the beauty of the internet. So today we're talking about um, vocabulary to describe a work of art. Now guys, you know that you have to really broaden your horizons in your IELTS preparation in order to be ready for anything. And I am certain that describing a work of art is difficult for a lot of you out there. It's even difficult for a lot of native speakers, okay? So guys, include this in your study plan. Choose a museum. It'd be cool if it was a museum in the city you wanted to live in or where you live now. Go to the museum's website choose one work of art and then look that up look up that specific painting or sculpture what have you look it up on wikipedia any resource just read a description of it okay that's how you're going to get really comfortable in the language the tone the vocabulary we use to discuss this very specific topic okay so let's get into my recommendations for some vocabulary here um all right so, uh, first of all, if you're describing a sculpture, some things you might say, a marble bust. So, marble is a material, like a stone material, um, and very expensive and heavy. And a bust is like from the hips to, to here, okay? That is a bust. So, that is a marble bust bust. I looked at one just an hour ago when I was preparing this. Um, and the description for this piece was it is elegant. Okay. This word, it, it's like a graceful flowing uh, appearance. Okay. I like graceful as well as an adjective. You can also describe a work of art as 
restrained. Now, this, it's simple, right? There's not a lot, there's not tons of like fancy detail or additional uh, decoration, okay? So restrained. Um, if you're describing uh, works of art that are from a classical period or either or might mimic that style you could say it has a classical sensibility so that means it looks like a traditional work of art that could anything guys sculpture uh, film um, paintings okay I'd love that phrase now describing it more specifically right the materials like marble paintings are often oil on canvas so in your description of a work of art, knowing the material is very helpful, right? It completes the details. Um, sometimes you might see a mural. This is fantastic. A mural is a huge piece. You can see them outside. They cover whole walls. Inside museums as well, something that covers the whole wall. I am thinking specifically of one of my favorites, the Guernica from Picasso. So I looked that up on Wikipedia and that gave me some ideas for vocab today. So I encourage you guys to read that article as well. Important historical piece. Guys, if you are wondering about any of my vocab, remember, look below the video. I type it all out for you guys. Okay. Um, another phrase, which is nice, it utilizes a palette of, so palette is like the range of colors, right? So utilizes a palette of grays and blacks. <laughs> we uh, normally colors aren't pluralized, but in this phrase they are. Um, okay, another adjective, you could describe it, any piece, as moving, if it made you feel something, okay? It is moving. And last one, I love this one, um, if you're describing what, what you see in the painting, you could say, um, prominent in the composition is blah 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 is a woman and her child whatever um, so that's a great way to introduce what you actually see in the photo or painting okay guys so please write down some of this vocab practice using it but most of all i encourage you to start your own research into art guys all these all the famous museums have like virtual tours you can take just choose a couple pieces that strike you and research them okay uh have we got any announcements to make or anything uh constant didn't you are you having some kind of a sale on your on your etsy shop or Oh yeah, I am having a sale on, in the Etsy shop. It's um, ten percent off um, everything except for a particular ring that I sell. You know, just a little inexpensive ring, um, but that has free shipping on it. So, and then a lot of stuff does have free shipping. So, um, it's what's your you what's know, your address to your your Etsy shop? It's www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C Brosnan B C B R O S N A N S. So here we go. That's the address. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if take a peek. If you're looking, if you folks, if you're looking for a unique, uh, one of a kind gift, but all yeah, the pastels are all of the artwork is pretty much on sale. That's, too, that's so. the time to do it. Yeah. And, uh, Diane, what's your website? Are you having any kind of a sale or anything or just? Uh... No, not currently, um, but it's uh, www.dianehuntstudio.com. Same way, folks. If uh, And, of course, you know, I'm at cjklartworks.com. So if you're looking for uh, a unique uh, gift for the holidays, because this is the time. This is the time to buy, yeah. you know. That's the thing artwork. about it too. It's unique artwork. <laughs> yes, this is unique. When you buy originals, that's it. You have the original. <laughs> yep. All right. That will be, I think we're going to wrap this up for this episode for November the 11th, 2019. And this is the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 21. This is Clyde J. Gale saying goodbye to everyone. Bye bye, Diane. Bye bye, Constance. Good night, Clyde. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night everyone. Good night, Good night everybody. Folks.
The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.